Oh boy, okay, we have the mega, the mother load right now of documents that uh, many, many people have been working to keep under wraps. And now we know why. We learned a little bit Friday, but now we know so much more about what went down in Nashville, what motivated this individual to do what they do. And more importantly, we now know why the left has tried to suppress it because it basically confirms everything everyone thought. There is no doubt in my mind that this video will be hidden. So make sure you right away, you leave a like on it. And after you watch it, share it out, share it on social media, leave a comment on it. Uh, because the machine is trying desperately, desperately to hide all of this. And it, it is so wild how exact, how predictable everything has been, how exactly, you know, these documents have started coming out. Now we have here, uh, the individual that did what they did, right? Had left a note for their parents with instructions for if I don't survive my actions. The team at the, I want to give a big shout out to those at the Tennessee Star. Um, I have several pieces of information that they have put out today and yesterday over the weekend um, that it, it is wild. The Tennessee Star has now obtained the self-deletion note left by that loser that went into uh, uh, did what they did in Nashville um, before what happened on you know March 27th last year. Um, Metro Nashville PD investigators found the note posted to their wall, which the star has learned was adorned with childhood memorabilia and photos. By the way, later in this video, we're going to talk about how this individual had called the self help lines multiple times and their and their and their ravings were ignored. This is about a total systemic collapse and failure. Addressed to their parents. They also mentioned their brother Scott in the two paragraph note. If I don't survive my actions, I want my room to be left exactly as it is. Um they instructed their mother and father, I don't want any of my positions down in that dingy basement. Um, well, I don't think you get to make demands from beyond the grave, but okay. In all capital letters, please read my will, where they explained their parents would find instructions about what to do with their stuffed animals. So they put their stuffed animals in the will. Um, I'm worried that you and Scott, what you and Scott will have to go through, uh, wrote them. Oh, they, I'm sorry. While they did not offer details about the incident in the note, uh, they signified a concern about the repercussions for the surviving family members. I'm worried about what you and Scott are going to have to go through. They concluded, I'm sorry, but it is my time to go. I love you. Signed Aiden. Of course, they were born a biological woman but identified as a man at the time of the incidents. The existence of the note was confirmed on April 4th, 2023, when an inventory of items seized from the search were finally published. So there appears to be a massive, um, you know, somebody who's looking out inside this police department because for some reason, a bunch of parents of those who lost their life that day have been working hard in court to prevent the release of these documents. Here we see this also. Um, I want to go through. So we have the journal. Oh, yeah, here you go. They claim they planned the incident for five years to near perfection. We want to talk about that. Um, I want to talk about um, here, FBI memo on protection of legacy tokens sent to the National PD. Um, it opposed the release of the documents. So the FBI was working to suppress these items. Why do you think the Tennessee star has obtained an FBI memo sent to the national PD on May 11th from a source familiar with the investigation, the letterhead and heading used for the memo indicate it originated at the FBI's critical incident response group in Quantico, Virginia. The opening paragraphs reveals it was sent by the behavioral threat assessment center. The memo does not specifically mention the individual who did what they did, it was, however, sent two days after Star News Digital Media, which owns the Tennessee Star, and the company CEO Patrick Michael Patrick Leahy filed a lawsuit against the FBI in federal court to compel the release 
of the loser's written documents, including those sometimes called a manifesto. And one day after Star News Digital Media and Leahy filed the lawsuit against them, the FBI sent the letter. As has been publicly acknowledged, the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit has assisted in this investigation. Any material related to the assistance and or the part of the open case is to be protected. As I referenced earlier today, our team is working to bring it to conclusion. Um, you know, the FBI memo, uh, mentions that those who do these things often leave behind items that claim credit for the incident and or articulate the motivation behind it. The agency refers to these items as legacy tokens. The term legacy token appears to be a creation of the FBI, um, and they don't want them. FBI, according to the memo, strongly discourages public dissemination of any legacy tokens in this letter. So just so we're clear, that is, you know, they're saying, hey, don't release. We don't want you to release the manifesto. We don't want you to release that. Why would the FBI care? They seem to not mind when it's a Trump supporter. Also in the news, a graduate at, at the Nazi College of Arts and Design in Nash, uh, Nashville, this individual on at least, this is uh, the loser who did the crime. I'm not trying to give them any clout or name recognition if you can't tell. Um, they, call, they claimed on at least two occasions, wrote about being scammed online in a business transaction after being scammed they wrote about their emotions. I broke my figurine, wrote uh, the loser. My outburst was because I can't stop feeling sad, angry, so sad, so much. They then wrote about their mental state. I've been anxious all week, all day, stressed. Then I'm told I'm bipolar by some prideful B word. She continued, no one gets me. Uh, everyone misunderstands autism before later adding, I'm not emo or bi but uh, effing with no lover. Oh, I, I think a bundle of sticks words, apparently. Apparently. Um, a list of prescriptions that they were given from Vanderbilt University Medical Center, published by the Star on Thursday, did not include medication specifically to treat bipolar. Instead, the prescriptions issued were used to treat depression and anxiety. In the entry, they also seemingly mundane moments of their day included that they ate at their favorite meal, which was, of course, chicken nuggets, as most adults do. They also wrote that they listened to the 1-800 number, which is a, like a teen help line, five times. The reference to the number could indicate that she called the number in previous years as the um, self-deletion prevention helpline was updated to this new line. Elsewhere, they also wrote that they would hate to leave their animals. I think they're meaning their stuffed animals, apparently referencing, oh, the stuffed animals. The star reported, um, you used to, by the way, you used to explore her fantasies with the stuffed animals. I could pretend to be them and do the things that boys and I would experience and blah, 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 blah. I mean, what you have here, quite frankly, is a deeply disturbed individual who needed help. You know, needed help. Also talked about desire to end their father. Among the 80 pages are five entries in which they mention their father, Ronald, including an undated entry in which they express the desire to end him and other cranky and mentally ill men. So now you have a biological female who uh, apparently had hated men. You know, that's an interesting. I wonder why the FBI might want to suppress that. Titled Dad Problems, they complained in the journal entry, I hate when my dad um, loves on the cats, not me. F word. He never once loved on me for years. Maybe like ever. I hate his cranky old man existence and all cranky good for nothing mentally ill men should not be alive. They also additionally complained that her father had a negative outlook on capital letters. Well, guess what, you loser? I hate your life. I don't care if you die. I want to end you. So you had somebody who was deranged, hated men, was on various prescriptions. Um, I guess I'm not sure why 
this has been so diff I mean, this does not surprise me at all. You know what I mean? There's also additional entries that were revealed. I'm so sorry, Nikki. They wrote, I didn't mean to plan my incident on the 17th. Oh, um, they first indicated that they selected January to go after the incident, apparently addressed to Nikki Tidwell, who had previously identified as a friend they made who was studying at the college. I'm so sorry about the date. I didn't mean to plan my event on the date. I'm going to be a terrible ass for leaving you. How bad my heart hurts. Um, the next day, I mean, this was planned out years in advance. You know, and apparently they used to sleep, you know, they used to uh, enjoy their various bedroom activities with their stuffed animals. Nobody around them saw any of this. You know, nobody knew. They had, a they had planned the incident for five years. Now, I wonder if that was... Remember when the initial initial writings that we saw where it said something like, um, I almost got caught? I wonder if that lines up with the five-year mark. On March 13th, 2023, two, year, two weeks before the event, they wrote, Thank F, I planned for this. Plan in my mind and to near perfection. In the middle of the entry, they wrote that the date they selected to go after the school and an undated entry on the next page that indicates that they planned it for years, claiming the lives of too, too many. For five years, I planned for this. Now I'm finally ready to go. Then they drew the octagonal symbol that they regularly used in their entries and discussed the plan to go after the place, the school in which they deemed to label Dark Abyss and My Only Existence in a caption under the drawing. I mean, you essentially have somebody who is just wildly, you know, mentally unstable. Somebody who was in the system for mental health, was on various prescriptions, was, you know, essentially somebody who, I don't know, uh, was dealing with gender dysphoria and many of the things that go with that. It's wild to me that this is, people have fought so hard to suppress this information because to me, uh, a lot of this isn't even that surprising. You just have some unhinged lunatic who hates men. Turns out they hate men and they slept with their stuffed animals. Not surprised in the slightest. I hope we're informed by this video. Shout out to the work that the Tennessee Star has done. If you're informed by it, please do subscribe or follow this channel and we'll talk to you again real soon.